Hello and welcome back. No tutorial today, unfortunately, as I think we're overdue for a little bit of a channel update. We're just going to be catching up and outlining what we'll be doing going forward. Next week, we'll get to a tutorial. First off, as some of you may already be aware, I became a father about two months ago, and in that time since then, I've been adapting to the situation we all have. As such, at the time, I made a community post stating that I would be missing for the next little while, and I believe that was probably the best decision. However, during that time, I've not been idle. I've been working hard on rebuilding and upgrading the terrain system. This has actually helped keep me sane there in the last two months. First, however, let's go over what comes next for the channel. I believe that in order to prevent any burnout, I should probably switch subjects regularly as well as not holding myself to a perfect standard with every single video. As such, going forward, I will alternate between videos which are building up the basics, like the visual shader material series, and videos which are a bit more specific for the backlog of requests I have received, like the inventory systems. In between all of these, I intend to scatter out terrain tutorials, which will be a little bit more loose and will probably be a bit more of a deep dive into technical subjects, like virtual texturing, foliage placement, computer shader, stuff like that. Hopefully this results in a consistent output of useful videos for the community without making me feel too overburdened. Now for the train, which while I would love to do a deep dive, for now it's probably going to be a little bit high level and more of an overview. In the coming months, I will be releasing multiple videos going over specific subjects as they are finalized and become more stable. For now though, let's go over the basics. The terrain is generated via an orthographic camera which moves through the world rendering the stamps which have been inserted to create the terrain, resulting in a baseline height map, color map, and any other data layers we might need like roads or grass height adjustments. In my previous videos on the subject, I had this, but it was a single image at the time, usually very large to accommodate the detail I required. This was something like 4K towards the end, which I found resulted in extreme performance loss. As such, I had to entirely scrap the initial version and start over with a plan to render the world in smaller chunks and stitch them together using an indirection table, which resulted in a virtual texture system currently present in the project. In a virtual texture system, all the data is rendered at a much lower resolution. In my case, I stuck with 512 by 512 on the images. All this is stored in something called a page table, which is essentially just a bunch of images in an array, which are paired with a very low resolution lookup image, which tells each chunk of the world which index at the page table they belong to, as well as what scale the UVs are at, as this page table has multiple virtual mint maps in it at the same time. This means that while the data in the world can be something like thousands of images, the GPU only needs to contain what is currently necessary to present the world directly around the player. It's important to note that while the rendering distance is currently limited, limited due to the terrain mesh itself, the virtual texture actually extends for 32 kilometers in every direction and is actually adjustable to be even further view distance. I just need to get the mesh larger to actually see that data. In addition to this, I built out a UI which allows for the construction of a custom procedural system, which is constructed into and run on a compute shader. You can see this on the left hand side of my screen. For ease of extension, all of the UI options are built using JSON, meaning this UI can be extended by anyone to allow for any major feature like Gaussian blur or ray marching, and all that is required is a restart of the editor to retrieve the updated options. Now, I won't go into too much details, but essentially the baked data, height map, color, etc., is fed in at the top, and each layer can do a wide range of things, all of which are defined by the JSON. This can be things like generating normal maps, cavity maps, AO, or slope maps, all the way to simple math like taking the maximum from the height map and the grass height map to output a composite, which is the height map the grass is spawned onto. Then down at the bottom, the export layers take this data and either write it to disk to be accessed during runtime for the foliage generation or whatever, or pushed to a global shader variable to be accessed by the terrain or any other shader directly. Finally, all of the foliage is generated on the CPU directly around the player, using the saved export layers. This is probably my least favorite part because although the foliage is obviously generated at a very high density at the moment, and really most of the performance cost at runtime is actually the models themselves, However, the issue is actually during the editor usage when the data is actually being consistently rebuilt. It takes a bit of time on another thread, as such you sometimes have to wait a while when moving far distances for the foliage to be generated. My intention is to move this to a compute shader, because in addition to the performance increase of having all the foliage placement be handled on the GPU, I can also discard the mask layers, meaning the disk space usage for the page cache will be decreased substantially. And that's where we are. Obviously, there's a lot more detail to how all these systems work, and rest assured we will be going over them in the future, and I haven't even gone over how I'm planning on changing the layer system, as I am currently quite displeased with the UI performance and functionality, but all of that will come in due time. I did want to say thank you all so much for your patience. It's been a little bit of time here, and I appreciate everyone sticking around. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and we'll be back here next week with a proper tutorial.